everyone and welcome to this first week of vampire summer in the world of darkness a lot of things happening around not only vampire but in general world of darkness related things today we bring you our creative lead justin Achille who will be here for the interview about Hunter the Reckoning. We discovered that there are some people jumping in to the Hunter from Vampire the Masquerade and sometimes having some questions about what are the differences in between how touchstones work in between Vampire and Hunter, or what about these chronicle tenets, or how do I interpret some things in this book. So we want to give you a little bit more insight into the design of Hunter the Reckoning and right after that jump straight into the waterfall of news that we had this week from New York by Night being announced and premiering this Friday to World of Darkness Nexus and what exactly this is, plus more things. But before all that, let's welcome Justin Achille. Let me see very quickly if he is awaiting me. Hello? Hello, Justin. Hello. Great. Okay, you can hear me. I can hear you. And now everyone can see you as well. It's good to see you. How was your day? <laughs> There's the cat back there. We can... He's kind of blurry right now, but uh, he's hanging out with us too. We can see uh, the yeah, cat so in the it's, fog. It's been a, a bit of a lumpy day. Um, I went to the doctor this morning. I had a flat tire on the way back, and uh, the spare was flat as well. So. <laughs> 30 minutes an exciting morning <laughs> 30 minutes ago we thought that this interview is not going to happen but we made it work thank you so much Justin, say, for the, being the here. fates were smiling upon us <laughs> yes thank you so much Justin, for successful roles today and for being able to join us uh, in time so uh, with that in mind uh, hunter we did talk a plenty about hunter already but it's always room to talk more especially now that we've noticed that a lot of people are coming to hunter from vampire the masquerade and sometimes having questions about how things are different and why exactly are they different so starting from the very beginning what was the difference you think in the design premise for hunter reckoning after vampire v5 yeah, that's a good question, and um, this is something that we're actually watching uh, really intently because with the um, advent of the fifth edition of the World of Darkness games, um, it's really been a chance to kind of refocus. Um, the previous editions have been kind of accumulating lore for you know 30 years, and the fifth edition sort of uh, sets that aside, and if you want that, that's available in those legacy editions. But really, the focus of the fifth edition is on, you know, for a vampire, it's the young vampires. Um, for hunter, it is not the hunters in the orgs. It's the kind of individual hunter um, kind of the the way we talked about it uh, as we were doing uh, design meetings was like, you're a plumber and you learn that the uh, house that you're fixing, there's a vampire in it, right? You're not this super high powered hunter, you know, with awesome equipment, et cetera, et cetera. You can get that through edges and stuff. But mm -hmm. for the most part, the hunter is a kind of just clued in person who suddenly realizes the supernatural is true. And now um, the focus is you have to do a lot with a little. Um, and so the systems kind of reinforce that there. Um, kind of to answer your question uh, more directly, we mm -hmm. do reuse some of the kind of system categories from Vampire. And this is something that I think you're going to see going forward with the other games as well. Um, so things like convictions, right? Um, convictions are very in Vampire tied to your humanity. Uh, but hunters don't have humanity. They're not pretending they're human. So we don't have a stat that tracks that. Uh, yes. By contrast, you look at touchstones and hunters still have touchstones because touchstones are the people who are important to you. You know, they're almost why you hunt or they give context to your drive. Um, and so they don't work the exact same way they do for vampires. Uh, but we did want to kind of use that already in place system or parts of it um, to reinforce that, you know, vampires have people who keep them grounded um, and keep them in touch with their humanity. Um, whereas hunters have people who keep them in touch with why they they hunt, you know, the people they're trying to protect from this awful, awful world full of supernatural taint. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I'm, I'm in another tab right now, I've got, you know, parts of werewolf open and, you know, werewolves will have touchstones too, and they will be the people who uh, still are important to them. I don't want to promise this, but one of the things we're exploring is maybe you can have a place as a touchstone as a werewolf, uh, because, you know, you want to kind of prevent the despoilment of the world. Again, that's not a promise, but you can kind of see that we're using the systems um, in these different ways, uh, but in a larger kind of category that should be generally familiar. Um, so the player 
feedback here has been really valuable where, you know, players assumed, oh, it's got convictions or it's got touchstones. They work the same way. Well, no, they don't, right? Everyone is going to get kind of a tweak to that sort of system. Uh, but we still want there to be a sense of um, you are kept in touch with the world through these people or places or whatever it might be. That makes sense. And uh, of course, your answer already answers this partially, but just to be very direct and uh, like for it to make it easy to grasp for people who are jumping from Vampire to Hunter, why exactly do we not put convictions on the touchstones uh, for Hunter? Uh, so Vampire has this really, really interesting, almost like tripartite piece of you've got your convictions, which are uh, the things you do to uh, justify uh, your actions, right? Yes. Uh, they, they're the things you tell yourself. Um, the touchstones are the people who keep you uh, kind of related to the world. If you don't have any touchstones, you're just this kind of disenfranchised monster doing awful, awful things. And then the chronicle tenets as well. And so in Vampire, all of those three form this really, really tight ecology of, you know, if you do this, you're going to risk your touchstone or you're going to lose a bit of your humanity. And we've actually even seen players use the Chronicle Tenets a little bit different. Some players use the Chronicle Tenets and expect they will be broken as well. Whereas for other troops, they're these kind of inviolate, you know, no, the Chronicle is about this. Yes. So that's Vampire, right? So moving over into Hunter, uh, one of the things that I think is fascinating, there's this, this stuff that we've been discussing in the office. Um, it's called sober play is the phrase. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that uh, Kareem shared. You know, this was kind of his perspective perspective on it. And I really love the thought behind it that we really want players to have as much autonomy over their actions as possible. We want them to be making choices, especially a hunter. And any systems that you put on top of that that steer you um, are kind of taking away your sober play. They're taking away, you know, oh, I want to do this. Oh, but I have a humanity of force. So that means this instead. Hunters, because they're not pretending to be human, don't have humanity. You know, they they have all of the choices available to them as possible. They are probably the most sober play of all the World of Darkness creatures because unlike vampires, they don't have a beast acting on them. And unlike werewolves, they're not, you know, consumed by rage. And unlike, you know, the other World of Darkness creatures, they don't have these kind of uh, supernatural forces kind of pulling them into this kind of archetype. Instead, hunters entirely have free will. Um, and so that's why the systems are much, much lighter in mm -hmm. Hunter for touchstones and for chronicle tenets and why convictions are absent. Um, basically there to, to give you, hey, <laughs> everything you do, you get the consequences for and you're responsible for. Of course. And we do have a lot of questions about people wondering whether Hunter is also going to be on Straight Arrows Vault, which, yes, we confirmed in the future, Hunter, the Reckoning, is going to be a part of the Straight Arrows Vault, where it means that people will be able to write their own um, like uh, supplements for it as well. So do you think that um, Hunter, basically, as its place right now, as a core book, is more of a sandbox where people can pick and choose things that they want to do and make their own best possible Hunter uh, experience, uh, while things like Storytellers Vault can add, add a little bit more mechanics, more like things to confine uh, people in a particular styles of coteries and I mean, the chronicles, right? Right, right. That's actually one of the strengths I see for the Storytellers Vault is on my end, um, my job is not to tell the story. My job is not to be the auteur and say, here's what happens in the world of darkness. My job is to, you know, as, as creative director, we, we draw the creative constraints, right? We say, here are the themes. Here's what the game is about now go and tell your stories right so every yes. every player is is a partner and every um you know business partner is a storyteller as well right when you uh, play game x y or z you are telling the story of that game and so the storyteller's vault is this really great place to do that like if you've read hunter you've seen in the back of the book with the, you know all of the antagonists you know here are the antagonists from the philippines and here are some from mexico and here are some from the american south and you know we deliberately picked these spaces to give a flavor and feel of those places and the storyteller's vault, man, I'm really wanting players to like, here's something from my city or here's something from my country or here's something from my culture. Yes. And, you know, we can't do that in a book because we have a finite amount of pages. We can shine a spotlight, but we can't do everything. And so for the storyteller's vault, oh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, but also, as you say, um, a, a way to introduce new, I'm sure we're going to see new edges. Um, one of the things that um, is really and deliberately light in the Hunter Core book are the merits and flaws. Mm -hmm. um, we really wanted people to kind of think about your edges 
edges. Um, think about how you contextualize your edges. In a lot of ways, uh, the character customization comes through expressing those edges. You know, are do you have a lot of technology available to you? Um, are you uh, seemingly powered by this, you know, divine favor who makes things happen, you know, to your benefit? Um, are you just extremely skilled and competent, etc.? Um, so in moving the attention away from the merits and flaws, uh, we, don't, we want players to focus on defining their edges but we know how much players like merits and flaws. So I'm sure those are going to be in the storyteller's vault. That's a great place for them. Yeah. And also speaking of the, you know, the page count and also how deep we go in Hunter into some of the things. One of the uh, questions from people coming from Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition was about the, you know, the very much uh, advanced mechanics and the actual mechanics, mechanics of combat, like, for example, grappling. And the question was, um, like, Vampire already is uh, pretty light when it comes to the, you know, actual mechanics of encounters to combat and stuff like that to make sure that there's more space for storytelling instead of just you know purely mechanics and Hansa goes even more into the path of making it even more lighter uh, what was the design thought behind that that's an awesome question and I'm gonna give you two separate answers for it okay. <laughs> uh, the first of which is it's not really page count it's mm -hmm. actually theme that was steering us on this um, the way I wanted to look at hunter um, anybody can make a hunter game about fighting monsters right there's tons of, of games out there about you're the hunter and you're fighting monsters you're fighting back etc uh, but hunter the thing that, that makes it different hunter the reckoning is um, kind of like we were talking about with those systems before the personal relationships not only with your touchstones but also with your cellies right yeah. the, the relationship Relationships you have with the people in the world who keep you grounded, who keep you, uh, you know, functional, and who help you out in your hunt against uh, the darkness here. And so the actual fight with the quarry is such a minor portion uh, of the actual gameplay. So much about it is discovery um, and uh, finding things out and planning things. Really, the way we look at Hunter, it's less about a go kill the monster game, and it's more almost like a heist game. Um, if you're familiar, like with the show Leverage, um, one of the you know mm -hmm. the, the the show there, like they always go after these uh, much more powerful individuals who have wronged people who have kind of punched down um, and that was sort of the essence that i wanted to get to get to capture with hunter that you know here's these people who have all of these supernatural powers and they're monstrous and you're striking back against them right you are you are you get to punch up here and that's why the orgs are antagonists as well uh because they have all the advantages they have all these benefits they're not doing a lot with a little they're doing a lot with a lot but they're fighting to keep the status quo in place right the sad has all this government backing and they represent kind of things as they are and you know a, a kind of oppressive government and that's why you're not playing them you're often punching up against them as well so there's less focus on the immediate tactical combat and much more on the uh, relationships. Why are we doing this? How are we going to do it? Uh, oh shit, that failed. We need to pull back and take a different direction. Yes. Um, and so, you know, figuring out what you're doing and making course corrections for it is really at the core of Hunter. Uh, part two of that question um, is we do have a uh, rule supplement that we're planning to put out. Um, the rule supplement is going to be free, uh, but it is an expansion of uh, additional systems that you can use for World of Darkness uh, games in the storyteller system. So it's things that add a little bit more complexity, like you've seen in Vampire. Um, it's things that uh, give you permutations. Like if you've, if you've gone through the Hunter book, you'll notice, oh, there's no rules for like falling here, right? And so the idea there is that there's no like generic falling you know if you fall you know there's no rules for catching on fire in hunter instead in hunter they are you know Ephraim the vampire sets you on fire and here's what that does or here's this weapon and you catch on fire if it hits you and here's what that does there's no like generic being on fire and so yeah. this rule supplement this free rule supplement um, to give like more context for the world of darkness system or for the storyteller system uh, we're going to put out for free it's applicable like across all of the world of darkness games uh, going forward we kind of assume that you know the human is the baseline and each then core book will have its own twists on it. You know, like vampires uh, aren't especially susceptible to fire, but sunlight obviously treats vampires differently than it does mortals. Um, you know, vampires fear fire, uh, but ultimately it does the same kind of aggravated damage to them that it does to mortals, etc. So you kind of get these, you know, twists and variations that make those rules their own in those rule books. Great. So we have a confirmation of the uh, basically uh, storyteller supplement, which is going to be available for free. And it's going to be uh, like setting agnostic for all the World of Darkness settings, basically. So for Hunter, Vampire, Werewolf in the future. And speaking of that, um, does that mean that Hunter is basically with its character creation and how it approaches, you know, these particular things like touchstones or critical tenets, more like categories of rules than the actual, you know, uh, set in stone rules? Is it going to set the curse for the next IP? 
piece, like, for example, Werewolf coming after Hunter? I don't want to tip too much here, of course, because <laughs> okay. obviously Werewolf is still in development. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, we do want players. Um, as you mentioned, we've got new players coming into Hunter, or players who are also familiar with Vampire coming into Hunter. And you know, the more this baseline is consistent, the easier it is to have a new experience with a diff one of the different IPs in the World of Darkness. So you know, if we can kind of minimize the friction that exists mm -hmm. on the systems level, um, we can uh, make it easier for you to you know, you've played Vampire, you've played Werewolf. Or We've played Hunter, and now it will be easier for you to pick up a Werewolf. Uh, but we do want to, as you say, um, kind of call out in those new IPs. Um, and this is some of the some of the actual editing I'm doing um, in Werewolf. Is we're not just assuming, hey, convictions work like this. We're going to call out, hey, if you've used these in Vampire, here's how they're different. Here's how they're different from Hunter. Um, so you kind of get the context of what we're trying to achieve with each of them, um, and kind of ease you into if you already know this rule. Here's how it's different to kind of reduce that barrier. Of course. And now, uh, interesting question, which I think a lot of people are, um, you know, is it's a very important part um, of uh, World of Darkness settings for a lot of people, creating their own character and having a freedom of, you know, creation of whatever you want to do. So we already did, I think, a big step forward with that with, with Vampire, with clans not being tied to specific disciplines. And even in Players Get, as we've already said, so we are going to introduce alternative banes for each clan, which is going to expand the way you can play Tremere or Celebri. And uh, with Hunter and the um, Creed specifically, we do have uh, also a lot more freedom. One of the questions I've seen is, um, for example, with the Faithful uh, Creed, do we expect the Hunter with the Faithful Creed to be specifically into some kind of a religion? Or can this be a faith in an object, a person? Like, uh, how's it interpret also versus the true faith, which we know from Vampire? Yeah, that's that's a good question. And ultimately, that is something that I think each Chronicle will determine on its own. And that's going to be something I think that is answered almost in the Chronicle tenets. Mm -hmm. you know, if you want to, if, if faith is literally an expression of, um, it might be that it's a higher power, or it might be the belief itself is what's important, you know, more of a religion than an actual divine intervention. Um, and so, you know, the, the faithful creed accommodates all of those. Um, I have absolutely played in games where people have had, um, you know, faith in in uh, science or faith in uh, like pure rational truth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of this kind of gets into mage territory, but you know, absolutely, if you want to use that in your chronicle, you know, faith in, it might even be a family member. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say it's like, hey, fair game across the board, do whatever you want. Apps always, you know, discuss this at your table so everyone kind of knows where the boundaries are. Uh, but this is a totally, totally viable way to, to, to look at faith. That's great. Um, so yeah, more freedom in the creation, but also great to have some boundaries at the table. Uh, I feel like Hunter gives a really cool, this sandboxy approach to making your, your own Hunter story. And with that in mind, having Hunter already out in the wild and people approaching it, people playing the first Chronicles with it, like we have with Glass Cannon, uh, with Podcast by Night, and Pod by Night, and with uh, Renegade uh, with their day shift. Uh, what do you think is the, like, are the lessons that we take as World of Darkness after releasing Hunter and from creation of this book. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I know we want, well, when we built the Hunter book, there's no starting chronicle in it. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, that was one of the things that uh, I kind of had wanted people to do is to storytellers look at the um, antagonist chapter and grab one of those. And that becomes um, the uh, kind of starter chronicle. You know, here you've learned about this. The situation is going on and you jump into that and hunter is very much focused on that right like you're not going to take on the entire world of darkness at a time you're going kind of piece by piece and uncovering these individual mysteries and sometimes they overlap um and sometimes you know here come the orgs while i'm trying to deal with this thing and i've got these goddamn cops bearing down on me as well um and you know so that's an approach that hunter specifically focuses on uh but i know also for example that we have a lot of new people coming to the world of darkness and uh one of the things that they uh really benefit from is a kind of onboarding experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally having an email conversation in another tab right now uh, about um, we're going to have a 
starter chronicle or at least starter story in werewolf uh because werewolf is a little more esoteric than hunter you know hunter is there the mon there's the monster go mm -hmm. um whereas you know werewolf is you know you're a werewolf but you're also part spirit and you are defining your relationship with gaia that's kind of how we're gonna i'm, I'm seeing we're gonna use convictions there is you define your relationship with gaia uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to having it preset um but you know okay what do i do with this how do i tell a story with this and so we want there to be in the book uh, a kind of onboarding experience that helps you get a story up and running. Um, I really, really loved the storytelling chapter in Hunter um, and in Werewolf. I want a storytelling chapter that's as good, but it has to be smaller because Werewolf as a book is already bigger than Hunter. Uh, yes. And I got to fit it all in, right? So poor happy. Renegade has to, has to stock it and ship it. And <laughs> I'm really happy that we're getting some more glimpses on the Werewolf as we're talking on Hunter. Cause... I'm making no promises here. I'm just talking about the thoughts right <laughs> oh, now. Of course. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> let, great. Let, let's be clear. We, we know that the, the, the book is in production and it's being made and we try our best to make it the best possible. So uh, that's coming. Um, all right, Justin, anything else you want to tell us right now about hunter post hunter now hunter future hunter <laughs> uh in one of my other tabs oh, i have so many tabs open uh, <laughs> i'm actually looking at the first uh, hunter supplement um that renegade has done and submitted to us we've already got the manuscript for that um i won't spoil that um i'll let them uh you know kind of uh, manage their own uh, announcements there mm -hmm. um but there is supplement support for hunter coming out there is stuff in the pipeline it looks good um one of the things also that kind of in working on Hunter, um, we talked about this a little before, and the movie itself is, you know, was made back in the 90s. Uh, but I think of Aliens as kind of a great Hunter experience, right? Yeah. Um, and two of the game systems that are in there, Desperation and Danger, you can really see present in the movie Aliens. And so, like, thinking in terms of Desperation, you know, you've got the uh, the Marines are, are keep getting killed off. And, you know, Bishop is having to crawl down this tunnel to turn on this beacon way down there. And, you know, at the very end, you know, Ripley is getting into this construction loader and fighting the aliens. So there's all this, you know, kind of sense of we've got to push it further. You know, this, this, this hunter desperation of, you know, we've got to come out of this. And you can even kind of almost map the characters to the creeds almost where the Marines yeah. and Marshall and uh, it's like, I'm not going to force it in there, uh, but also at the same time, uh, while their desperation is going up, danger is going up as well, right? Like they, they first, you know, realize we get into the planet and, you know, there's this kind of storm. And so there's this kind of low level danger and then they land and eventually they've got like rooms full of monsters and this queen alien where there's, you know, a final face to face fight there. And obviously the movie Aliens is more focused on, you know, the high action uh, and the fight in between. Um, but like, if you think about it too, like it's a movie where you don't even see the monsters until, you know, the the third act of the movie yeah that's and, you great. Know, it's all handled very much <laughs> yeah. very very well there um and so you know again grabbing onto those systems for for danger i know the sketch of danger like the, the outline of the system itself um is very simple but if you get into the actual antagonists you can see examples of how to use that system so if you've got some questions it does show up later in the book there of some practical examples oh i, I use it like this oh number you know the danger value of people are coming after the the hunters at this point uh, or you know this attack does you know danger value in damage stuff like that so you get you know these kind of practical examples of how to use it in your chronicle so apart from aliens any book or movie recommendations for people who want to write their first hunter chronicles uh, I would recommend like I said before uh leverage there mm -hmm. um and uh almost Let's let's blur the lines a little bit here. You know, for, for the, the the experience of being a hunter is kind of like being a shadow lord and werewolf, right? Um, mm -hmm. You need to pick the fights you can win, and that's what's going to help you, uh, kind of as a werewolf, build your legend or as a hunter stay alive. So you know, have that have that shadow lord mentality um, as a hunter. There, pick the fights you can win. Nice. Love it. Thank you so much, Justin, for joining us today. That was super enlightening. And uh, can we expect you to hang out with us anytime in the future on Discord so you can answer some of the questions of people who are going to uh, probably ask more about Hunter? Yeah, I pop it in and out of Discord, so feel free to ask questions there. Um, I get to them as I get to them. I, you know, obviously Discord is a is a fire hose, um, so <laughs> you know when I see the questions, um, I try to answer them. Um, but uh, as you know, for the for the remainder of it. I'm still at work on, you know, getting more books out to people and, uh, you know, more uh, other stuff too, other games, other experiences for the world of darkness. So uh, thanks to everyone for, for being along on the ride with us on this. Perfect. Thank you so much, Justin, for joining. And I hope to see you here again because it's always a pleasure. <laughs> thanks, Alstar. See, see you. Ya. Bye.
All right, everyone, that was Justin Achille. I really hope that you enjoyed this. And Justin is often present on our Discord at discord.gg slash world of darkness. If you want to ask him some questions, do not tag him, please, because that would be way too much to handle. But he is popping in and out. And if I see an interesting question that I can pass on to him as well, I'm always there. I'm reading everything. So worry not. <laughs> I'll be there for you. And now let's talk about Vampire the Masquerade, New York by Night, which is premiering this week. I know, I know, it's been a pretty exciting announcement and something that not a lot of people saw coming. But this Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, New York by Night has its own premiere on this particular Twitch channel right here where you are. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, it's going to also have a premiere on YouTube on Monday. So if you want to spend your first watch of New York by Night with the chat, with other people and discuss everything, uh, you can do it on Twitch at 7 p.m. Pacific on Fridays and on YouTube at 8 p.m. Central European time uh, on Mondays. So both of these experiences have chat and basically everyone hangs out. So uh, and those of you who watched on Friday, please do not spoil things for people on Monday. OK, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, also, we are going to lock the um, videos behind the subscription on Twitch specifically for these three days. So if you want to watch the video during the weekend and uh, you are watching it on Twitch, you will have to be a subscriber. The videos on YouTube are going to be free to watch. So starting from Monday every week, you can watch the videos on YouTube. We do suggest to come to our Twitch sometimes and join us here because we have a lot of things planned. Not only New York by Night, but our streaming program this year is going to be super exciting and big. We are going to continue with Club Auspex, uh, which is going to be a post show uh, that will supplement New York by Night with talk shows of the cast talking about their characters, their experiences, how they came up with the characters, how they feel about things going on in the game. I watched some of the episodes already and they are absolutely hilarious and wonderful and these people are lovely, so you're going to love it. And um, apart from that, more things to come in the future, including the shows by yours truly and by Hadi. Uh, Hadi is working on Bet of Night, which the name should, should suggest you already a lot of the content that uh, Bet of Night uh, audio show is going to uh, consist of. And I am working on the Hunter Chronicle called Hunter Garage, which is going to take Hunter into new places and take actual place in a little bit new places as well. So a new take on how to do this and new take on um, on Hunter, I hope. So yeah, that's going to happen, happen later this year. I hope that you will join us for it. And uh, when it comes to New York by Night, uh, the cast is super exciting, but the cast is not only these wonderful four people that you can see. Right here, we are doing reveals every day on our social media, so you can check out more about these characters on our Twitter and Instagram. But this is just the first season, and the second season is going to see a new cast, a cast from a different faction. And then in the season three, these factions will clash, and these characters for a clash and what's going to come out of it well you gotta wait for season three to to, to see how it works so uh, jason made a really good effort with making the storytelling different better and basically going into way new places in comparison to la by night where you have these two coteries instead of one and the coteries clash at some point which is super exciting i really hope that you will like this let us know what you think we have a special channel for this on discord called new york by night where uh, you can drop all of your memes, all of your opinions and reactions. And uh, we have more exciting stuff around New York by Night to come in the upcoming weeks. But as for now, I invite you on Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific to Twitch TV slash World of Darkness to watch live on Twitch. And then the YouTube premiere happens on Mondays. All right, let's check out what else we have in stock for this week. And that is Vampire the Masquerade or World of Darkness Nexus as a whole. But as for now, what is available for you from Demiplane is Vampire the Masquerade Nexus in Early Access, which launched this week. You can jump on board, you can check it out. And what Nexus is, is basically the first set of digital, official digital tools for World of Darkness that um, is kind of similar to D&D Beyond, if you've ever used that. Uh, it's basically your digital help, your um, base, like computer 
compendium of information around Vampire the Masquerade, which you can use in your chronicles either on PC, mobile or on tablets. It's super handy and it contains a lot of functions. Not all of them are yet in place in the early access. More are going to be introduced. But um, the things that you can check out right now are the free companion, core book, Anarch and Camarilla with the compendiums, with a digital reader, very easy finder, digital tools, for example, for checking out the clans, disciplines and stuff like that. So you can very quickly see what exactly the discipline does, how do I apply it in play. In the future, what is coming is the character creation, character manager and um, your digital sheets where you can basically have your own library of characters, edit them and make them very easily using their digital tools. And what's more is that Nexus has its own uh, matchmaking system where you can not only find your uh, coteries to play with, but also if you are a professional storyteller, you can also organize paid games, you can get tips for storytelling, and there's a lot more functions in it. So this is your digital place to go and play Vampire the Masquerade with, with more options to come. Uh, please do check it out. Uh, you can check out the free companion right now. You can just make an account and see what's available. You can also purchase the existing books. There are also bundles with Renegade books. So if you want to still buy the hardcover copies of uh, some books, you can get them uh, basically together with Nexus Cheaper. And uh, they have a system that's, uh, that uh, combines these two purchases, which is super cool. And there's a lot more to come. I would love to hear your opinions about this, especially as it's still early access and there's a lot of stuff to do and make still with the, with the Nexus. But this is the start of our own version of D&D Beyond, which we were super happy to have and uh, to help you with your chronicles. Um, there is um, FAQ with more details about uh, this on the Demiplane forums. You can check it out on worldofdarkness.com. There's a news post about Nexus and there is the... Um, the, 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 the FAQ linked in there. I will be also opening a room, as for now at least, on discord.g slash word of darkness, where you can basically talk about Demiplane and give us your feedback, because we would love to check it out. And Demiplane also has their own uh, forums and discord and social media where you can uh, hang out and ask your questions. They are very quick to reply and very happy to listen to your feedback and uh, see what they can do. The FAQ already answers a lot of questions that I probably don't have the answers uh, for for you right now so you can go check out the FAQ on the forums and see more info about this. I really hope that this is going to be a tool that will help you with your campaigns. So far I've been using it a plenty <laughs> in order to you know very quickly check out things that uh, I need when I'm role playing myself and uh, I found it super handy. So if you do as well I will be very happy. Please do let us know. We will be doing that um, uh, feedback gathering on Discord as well. All right let's check out what more we have for you. And that is the New York bundle. Speaking of New York, Draw Distance has announced the New York bundle physical versions and collector's edition of the bundle of Cotteries New York and Shadows of New York together. The collector's edition is super sexy. As you can see in here, it's a very small image, but you can see the full one on Funstock website. Uh, it has not only this really nice box, uh, two games in it, um, basically you can pick the, con the, the um, uh, console or the platform that you want to play it on. It's going to be available in different versions with the reversible art book as well as the USB stick with a super cute Camarilla Ang, or Vampire Ang actually. And uh, it has the soundtrack on it with additional tracks. So if you are a soundtrack nerd as I am, it's something that's... Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the most when it comes to this uh, this bundle. And yeah, it's available for pre-order right now from Funstock, so you can check it out th there. There are various versions. You can just get the physical version if you don't have the games yet, or the collector's version if you want to enhance your vampire collection. We think that's beautiful, and thank you so much, World Distance, for organizing this. Uh, so many people are, you know, jumping on board still using Cotteries or Shadows of New York, and we get a lot of praise for these novels, so thank you so much, World Distance, for bringing these stories to us because uh, you got us a lot of new vampire fans that jumped in thanks to you. It looks super, super cool. And speaking of vampire... If you are still looking for something to watch up until New York by Night launches and beyond, The Nightlife has season two that launched this week on Renegade Channel. Story told by Diana D'Amico, it's a really cool uh, Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle set in Miami. So if you want to get to know more about these characters and this different take on the vampire story, I recommend to check on the Renegade Twitch. Besides of that, we do have a lot of really exciting things happening among the community. We don't have a family spotlight happening today because 
because Hadi is on vacations, but I just really wanted to mention that there are some super cool Hunter Chronicles going on. I started listening to the Pod by Night Desperate Measures. Uh, they are the authors of The Stitch of Fate with Mathis as the storyteller. Really cool. And the first episode is great. So I recommend that. And on top of that, Glass Cannon has also launched their own Hunter campaign. You can check it out on the Glass Cannon network. So yeah, if you want to listen to some Hunter, there is more choice. And of course, on Renegade Channel, there is Day Shift, which has concluded its first season. And uh, I hope that you like it. We do have a special room on Discord to talk specifically about the Renegade games if you want to check this out. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching us today. And I will be moving on to the um, FAQ that is available for our uh, watchers live. If you watch us live right now on uh, Twitch, then please do stay with us. Uh, we will have uh, more time for you to answer your questions. If you're watching us on YouTube, well, I'll see you on Monday in order to watch New York by Night together with you at 8 p.m. Central European time. Thank you so much and goodbye.